All right, guys, this is Eric with FirearmTutorials.com, and today I'm going to talk about the AAC Tyrant 45. I'll give you a quick look at it, um, some of the details and things I've noticed about it, kind of the ins and outs of it, and um, let me know what you think. So, a couple quick questions that I usually get about this is A, how do you get it? And B, can you shoot? like say nine millimeter through a 45 can. So quick, I'll go through, how do you get them? Well, they're legal in, I think 39 states. I'm in Florida, so um, they are legal here. There's a little bit of paperwork to do, um, not much. The biggest part of the process of getting this is basically just waiting for the paperwork to be approved, which takes anywhere from five to seven months, depending on how busy the ATF is. Um, once it's approved, you will get uh, a paper that looks like this. This is the tax stamp itself, and you basically should keep that with you anytime you use it. Whenever I have to go to a range or anything, they usually ask to see it. What I showed you is actually a color copy. I don't keep, uh, I have the original in a safe, but I don't, I don't keep it with me. Um, and a color copy or even a black and white copy works just fine. And um, to answer the second question, because it is a 45, obviously this hole is for a 45 caliber, you can shoot sub-calibers through it, like 9mm, 40, even 22s you can shoot out of this. Um, the key to doing so is having the pistons threaded in the appropriate, um, for the appropriate weapon that you're going to be shooting out of. So. What is on here now is 13 and a half by one left hand, which is the metric nine millimeter version. And these only go on one way. Um, they're a little hard to get started once, or started, but once you get them going, yeah, see, I was trying to do it the wrong way. Some of them go one way, some of them go the other, so. Jeez, sometimes it takes forever to get these things on here. Okay, once it starts to lock, you're good to go. So here it is on a USP SD, like I said, nine millimeter, 45. Um, is this gonna be as good as a dedicated nine millimeter can? No, but it's gonna be pretty damn close. And you know, if you only have the money to buy one can, I would go with a 45 can that you can use on all the other all the other calibers. So let's go ahead and take a quick look at this thing. Um, this uh, shell here, this can is actually titanium. Most of the other parts are either stainless steel or aluminum. So you've got basically this thing unscrews from two ways. You've got the end, the, the end cap, or actually the, the rear cap, I guess. And then you've got the end cap. So the rear cap just threads, threads on and off as you've seen. The end actually has these little holes and you need a special little tool to get these out. I wouldn't try and get these out without this tool because if you mess up the end of this, you're just asking for trouble. So uh, I think it's supposed to come with this tool. Mine didn't, so I had to buy this thing and it was like, I don't know, 15 or 20 bucks. So you put this in here, you un start to unscrew it. Sometimes you can feel or hear all the carbon and stuff if it's really caked up, but this isn't too bad. So once you get the end cap off, there's the end cap, and you'll notice here that the threads are actually actually down in there. So when you screw this in, it actually screws down um, on top of the thread, or on top of the baffle, and basically holds it in place. So pretty good design there. Um, and once you've got both sides out, you basically just push the baffles out. I don't have a scientific way of doing this. It's a combination of uh, that thing and a Bic lighter. And once you get them all out, there we go. Then this tube just slides off and you're left with the actual baffles themselves. 
So this isn't too bad. It's a little dirty, but nothing major. They kind of snap together. Sometimes they're stuck pretty good, other times they're not. But let's take a let's take a look at one of these guys. Let me you can see some of them are dirtier than others. It usually goes like the first one will be the be the dirtiest. Yeah, let's let's get a look at this guy. So you can see there's some I don't know what you would call that. I guess some kind of pitting of uh, carbon that's built up on there. And you basically can just clean that out with a brush. And it's good as new. It takes a little while though. So I don't like to clean this thing very often because it's kind of a pain in the ass. But then basically once you've got it, clean you just reassemble your baffles you can if you've noticed there's two different colors here there's a a dark gray or a black and then there's like a light gray and obviously the light colors need to be put together and these little portholes should match up in a straight line now the thing you'll notice about the first baffle is that it has this little hole in it right there and that just denotes that it's the very first baffle so once you assemble reassemble this and there's no like one two three like I said it's just light colors are assembled together snapped in place and then you want to actually invert these guys. So the gray ones are inverted. And as far as I know, that just helps aid in reducing a few more decibels. And then you basically just slide them back in like so. Put the end cap back on. Tighten it up. You gotta obviously make sure this thing is tight because you don't want it getting loose and flying down range and then having your baffles fly out the end of this thing. I'm sure it's happened at some point, but not to me at least. Um, as far as the pistons go, it's one of the negative things of this. I think these pistons are about 75 or 80 bucks each, so they're not cheap. And you're gonna need them for whatever weapon you're gonna take be, or whatever weapon you're gonna use because they do not take the same piston. So here I've got, uh, let's see, that's 16 by one right hand, that's for a 45. Here's one half by 28. And you'll see they're all marked. You see that says one half by 28 and then it usually has, yeah, like a direction depending on if it's left or right hand threaded, like you'll see the, uh, here's 16 by one right hand, and you'll see it goes one way. But then the, let's see if I, do I have the other one? Yeah, here's a 16 by one left hand, so you'll see they actually do go in opposite directions. Um, and then as far as a, a booster or a, recoil or a uh, fixed barrel spacer. It kind of just depends what you're putting it on. So if you're putting it on like a rifle, like if I put this on a UMP, um, I'm going to need the fixed barrel spacer. The point of this guy, the spring actually creates a little more recoil. And um, if I were to put this spring on, say, my UMP that didn't need it, Evidently what, theoretically what happens is that the, as the projectile leaves, that spring in there is going to create some energy and basically what's the negative thing that can happen is that it can uh, 
basically pull on the threads, which you don't want because it'll wear the threads over time. Um, I will say that if you use the fixed barrel spacer, like if I were to put this fixed barrel spacer and then put it in my SD, the gun's not going to cycle. And I've tried this. Basically, every time I fire the thing, I have to manually cycle the slide versus when I have the booster in, it works like clockwork. No problems. Weapon cycles just fine. Um, so that's the SD or the uh, Tyrant 45, like I said, with the USPSD. These HKs are great suppressor hosts. Um, I can't say enough good things about it. The, the pros, I mean, this thing is really quiet. Um, it's hearing safe. I shoot it all the time without any, any hearing protection and it works great. Um, it does get hot depending on what you're shooting through it. Like if you put you know, two mags of, of 45 or nine millimeter through this thing pretty quickly. It's gonna be hot enough to where you're not gonna to wanna to touch it because it will burn your hand. And um, a lot of times if you either have a glove that you can use to unscrew it or you just basically wait until it cools down and then you can take it off your, take it off your gun. So you gotta be careful of that. Um, I would say the, the, the biggest thing about these is being able to open them and clean them. Being able to shoot 22 out of this is great, but it does get the baffles pretty dirty, so you're gonna to wanna to open them up and clean them. Um, as far as shooting them wet or dry, um, I have an article about this on firearmtutorials.com. Uh, you can put five cc's of water in this thing and it does make it quieter. It is noticeably quiet, but it's not worth it to me because it makes such a mess when you fire the thing. So not only is water gonna come out of the end of this thing, that's basically, it's, it's all black and stuff from the carbon, but also you're gonna get it out of the breech. Every time the gun cycles, you're gonna have a hot mist of water, black water basically. And it's not a lot, but it's enough to where, you know, you get it on your face, you'll see it on your shooting glasses or something. Not only that, being uh, left-handed, shooting left-handed and having my other hand here, after three or four shots, my thumb here will be full of just wet black carbon all over the place. And then it's just gross. It smears all over everything. So for the most part, I don't shoot this thing wet just because I don't think it's worth the trouble and it's not worth the mess. Also, I'm not really crazy about the idea of putting water down inside the gun. Um, I did notice on the SD when I took the magazines apart, because of the water coming out of the can, blowing back down inside of the gun, just tiny amounts of water were getting in the gun or in the magazine. And then by the time I took the magazine apart, several months later, the bottom of the magazine started to rust. So something to be aware of when shooting them, shooting them wet. But um, I would say the only con of this is the process of, of getting one and waiting for the ATF to do the paperwork. Like I said, it's five to seven months, so it's a long time to wait. Usually you have to pay for these things up front. They're not cheap. MSRP on this thing, I think is 860. So it's, it's definitely an investment. Um, but I think it's worth it. Once you have it, you have it. And um, being able to open up and clean it, you should be able to use this for, for a very long time. And more importantly, being able to use it on different weapons. I mean, I think I've shot this thing on six or seven different guns. So, um, you know, it's a lot of fun. So if you wanna get into suppressors, this is definitely uh, a good one to look at, at least to start with. Um, that's about it. So. Um, thanks for watching, and uh, if you're interested in this kind of stuff, subscribe to my channel. I'm always talking about Class 3 stuff, um, lots of different gun stuff. So thanks for watching.